Next up, and the last part of the news is barely news, where we talk about some of the stories that uh, we didn't have, you know, we don't have too much to say probably, but we got something we wanted to let you know, you know, hey, they're out there and uh, stuff's mm -hmm. going on. So first one we're going to talk about is some testing uh, from RC groups. Um, basically, um, this is kind of a confirmation of things many of us know. Maybe you don't, uh, but hopefully you do if you're buying batteries in this hobby. But uh, yeah, C ratings are not not legitimate. I don't know. That may be <laughs> sit sit you know sit down because this may shock you. Mm -hmm. But C ratings are not legitimate. Yeah, there's a lot of testing here uh, by uh, this. Uh, who is this? Tail Heavy Creations. Uh, and there's a lot of data here. And if you want to go to the RC Group's thread and pick through it, there's a lot of information there that is well worth your attention. None of the batteries that he tests are FPV batteries. They're all wing batteries. But his conclusions yeah. about them probably carry over. And like he has a standard testing methodology where he tests the battery's performance. Let's just leave it at that. And basically, his conclusion was that price and C rating had really no correlation to performance. So there were some bad, expensive batteries. There were some good, cheap batteries, and everything in between. And I'm, I'm, I'm really a little bit surprised of that result because, like, I know that there's a lot of wiggle room in C rating, but I would surely expect, like, every 100 C battery to perform better than every 70 C battery or something. And it doesn't seem like that was his conclusion. Yeah. Um, just to be clear, this is not... Tail Heavy Productions is the video YouTuber, uh, but this is MCS guy Jetman Joe. Oh, thank you for speakers. that clarification. Yeah, he's been here for about... Hey, this is uh, the, the 11th year of this forum thread um, going on where he's been doing this battery talk and testing. I and, see. Uh, yeah. So, so, so Tail Heavy this. Productions did a video about the testing, which was done by... Yes. Oh, I see right here. Which was done by MCS guy. Sorry for that confusion. Um... Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, this is barely news because these aren't the batteries that we actually use and we're, we, we haven't really dug deep into the results. It's a very interesting test methodology, but, uh, it's all bullshit. So great. Good to know. So good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we got next. a video about a synthesizer. Yes. This is a, uh, synthesizer that uses drone motors. The noise of all of these cooling fans is something that we are not used to in 2023 and I can almost guarantee that if you own this you will not be leaving it on in your studio when you're not using it. But we haven't even turned the discs on yet. I'm gonna admit that I'm a little so bit relieved a, uh, to not even have a synthesizer that uses drone motors with optical uh, layers on top of the drone motor and then spins them and then uses that optical reading for the synthesizer oscillation, uh, like os oscillator, like for the, okay. for the waveforms. Okay. So, so it's the digital oscillator is turned down oh, to sorry, a digital you. version of what you would normally produce, you know, digitally or through into like another analog chip. Got it. Let's hear it. So there, yeah, there's multiple modes. Uh-huh. So he should go through them where he, he shows that uh, there's like a, um, there's a sw that switch he's shown on the left there. Here. And then this is M, the magnetic pickup. So there's a magnetic pickup that they use from those drone motors also to make noises. And so okay. we could mix that with a saw from this second voice. And we could also cross-modulate the voices, even if we turn this one. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. The motors, I thought yeah. the motors would be making the sound when I first saw this headline. I guess they are participating in the making of the sound. Yes. Yeah, they're produ help pr producing the, yeah, the, uh, like the waveform and stuff. <laughs> there are people in the chat who are way more excited about this than I thought that, than I than I am. People who are, are like really into people get really into synthesizers. Yeah. So just just to point out, this is a thirty three hundred dollars synthesizer. Uh, 
And uh, this is also probably only a thousand units. So this is like a, hey, we made a cool thing. We made a run of them and now we're done sort of thing. Yeah. So okay. I don't think this is like a new trend in the synthesizer market, but it seemed neat. So Analog synths using motors? Yeah. It's evolving yeah. just backwards. Uh, how do analog synths usually do this? It's with like capacitors and inductors, right? I assume so. And then I assume newer stuff is all chips, right? Like, yeah, those are digital synths. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, we've got a manned drone that I'm actually more excited about than some of the other quote unquote manned drones that don't really seem to fly very much. The Hexalift. Yeah. The Hexalift is a 500, I'm sorry, $495,000 uh, one man uh, human drone that you can fly around. Mm -hmm. It's uh, got a lot of redundant props and very small props. Um, I've actually seen this. We, we, we've talked about this previously, I think. Uh, oh, the props don't, don't look think... as small now. Yeah, I don't think we showed this specific one. There's about 20 of these different companies making one of these. There's a clip in here that I think is well worth showing, which is that it releases the parachute. They've got an example, a sample of releasing the parachute. Uh, did I accidentally skip past it? Yeah, there it is. There it is. So the damn thing has a parachute, like a jet-powered parachute to try to help you if you're going to fall. Um, oh, we're testing. Oh, yeah. These guys are serious. As much as this doesn't look like a sexy sky car of the future, it actually looks more like... It doesn't have a lot of cargo, I guess. It looks more plausible in some ways than some of the other ones I've seen. I want to fly one. So he actually gets up and he flies it. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't I I'll wait, you know. Like that's where I'm at. You're not you're not psyched. I mean I don't know how uh how good it would power loop. I mean, uh, what impresses me about this is that the damn thing actually flies up in the air with a person in it. And I know that's uh like seems like a low bar, but like, uh, like you look at the footage of the Jetson One, and maybe this has changed, but all of the footage of the Jetson One, it's skimming the ground. It's not. I mean, it's technically flying, but it's like it's like it's more like a hovercraft in my mind than an aircraft. Right. It feels like it's n not actually letting the pilot fly it. It feels like the pilot is just driving it and it's hovering above the ground without the pilot's control. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what it seems like. Like they don't show any footage of it ascending to 50 feet and then coming back down. And like for an aircraft, that seems pretty minimal. Like one of the minimal requirements. It does look cooler though. All righty. Next up. Uh, next up, uh, drone up is cutting job. Uh, we've talked about drone up delivery, uh, from Walmart and we've mentioned how we don't think it's really feasible and it's probably just investor backed, uh, hype that's building this stuff. Cause it probably can't be that cheap to deliver stuff. And, uh, drone up has started layoffs. Um, there's only two confirmed layoffs, but drone up confirmed they are doing layoffs. It's not much of the company. <laughs> um, two, la two layoffs. <laughs> It basically triggered them to ask Dronup, and Dronup said, yes, we are doing layoffs, but it, but it's not that many people. <laughs> Extremely slowly. <laughs> uh, it, we just didn't like Bob and Sue. Don't tell them. <laughs> it says they're, oh. they're letting go of a small percentage of the team, which is 418 people. So you would think that would be maybe 4, 8, 10, 12 people, you know, depending on how they decide to find that. We got to get rid of Bob and Sue. Okay. Um, let's, we're doing layoffs. We'll start with Bob and Sue, and then, like, maybe we won't lay any more people off. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob and Sue go to the news. 
Avery the Ham says, seriously, who is Drone Up? Drone Up's the major drone delivery company we've been talking about for a long time other than Zipline. Um, and they've been doing, yeah, I mean, tons of deliveries all over the place. Um, however, one of the biggest problems is, I think, just getting approval to actually do these deliveries, BVLOS with multiple operators. Like, there's a lot of certifications they're not able to get from the FAA to make things cheaper and easier to operate. However, here's something that, this is where I know there's a problem. This is how I okay. can tell you there's a problem with Drone Up. I'm, I'm not psychic, but I can tell you, as somebody who's run a business before, here's okay. how you know, okay? Okay. Let me read these back to back. The drone up has confirmed the job cuts and strategy change and said in an email that layoffs hit a small percentage of the team, which now totals 418 people. The company said that over the next six months, we will hire more people than were laid off. Why so, does that mean they're in trouble? Because why are you laying people off? You're hiring people again to lay people off. So either you're getting rid of expensive engineers or replacing them with cheap people. Or, I mean, you know what I mean? There's you're no getting, good you're getting rid that. of one department and replacing it yes. with another department? Right. Like, what, what What good reason is there to cut part of your staff and then hire more than the people you cut in a company that's operating properly instead of shifting those people into other departments and, like, who are already ingrained in your team? You have to redo hiring for those people? How much does it cost per person to hire? Insurance? Like, yeah. I mean, it's not just like, hey, somebody else, come on in. You know what I mean? So, You'd like, really like to move them around if you could. I mean, a successful company would attempt to move people around, yes, unless they felt like there was some kind of, like, uh, you, we had a coup of 12 people and we had to get rid of them. You know what I mean? Which That's what I think happened. That's what I'm saying. It also does not bode well for drone ups management and situation. Fair. Fair. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, uh, next up, we have mm -hmm. two flight controllers and one quadcopter. And uh, is this a two girls, one cup pun? Is that what you're doing? Uh, no, I was not. Okay, sorry, just me. Um, my bad. Uh, oh, we're looking at Gal Kramer's channel. Love Gal Kramer. Yeah, so so if this. I if I said to you, hey, what happens if I put two quadcopters back to back and taped them together, essentially? Okay. What would you say? Like, the obvious answer is that they'll fight and the thing won't fly, right? Yeah, pretty but much. But I think that that's not going to be the true answer. So let's figure, let's think, let's dig deeper. I mean, the whole point of a flight controller is to detect external influences and, you know, work with them, right? Or, or counteract them. Could it be that they will find some synergy? I don't know. Do we get the answer? Um, we do. Um, as a matter of fact, not only do they find synergy. For example, uh, when some motors are not in. Yeah. But uh, they find synergy no matter how many props you take off, pretty much, until you get down to three props. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's flying. So not only does he do testing to show that it flies and operates, everything's stock. He did not pid tune to do this. Everything's mm -hmm. just stock beta flight. He's got the TX line coming out of the Express LRS receiver to both flight controllers, so they both sure. get the same control input. Um, sure. And then he just slowly starts taking off props and testing it again. I mean, um, this is, does this have actual potential for, uh, like, you've got redundancy here of everything except the receiver. Does this uh, have actual you, potential for lifters? You've also added a fault, technically. Though. What's that? You, if, if either gyro messes up, you're fucked. Yeah, that's true. You have twice as many gyros to fail. So That's the way you would really want to do this is have like basically two gyros on each FC or something, and then yeah. do like a like a four bang where they all decide with yeah. each other. You know what I mean? You'd have to do something like that, I think. That's pretty cool. But mm -hmm. other than that one fault that you had, where if either gyro fails or has a lot of noise, you have problems. Uh, it's a pretty neat idea because yeah, you can lose up to four motors and everything's fine. All right. Well, I wonder how Gal got the idea to do this. Um, uh, we got, uh, uh, some swarm technology news here. Um, go ahead, Blunty. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to let you know, um, in the ever increasing news of military takedowns of drones, um, the Air Force Research Laboratory has tested another microwave, uh, swarm drone solution. Basically, mm -hmm. we talked before about a test from the DOD where they tested the Epicurus uh, unit, which was basically like a fold-up unit um, that was a trailer. 
and you fold it open and it can take down a swarm of drones at once with different microwave ra- waves. Mm. And this is basically another company has produced a similar device for the Air Force um, and can do a similar thing where basically if there's a whole swarm of drones out there, they just hit a button, this thing lets them pick which drones they want to take out out of the group and it just like blasts high frequency microwaves um, uh, at each of the drones and knocks them out of the air physically and disables their uh, So it's like targeted. Yes, it's specifically targeted. They use GANFET and they have a bunch of, they have like an array. Mm -hmm. So you can do multiple shots at multiple angles uh, with one device. Like, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. And they're precise enough within, I think it's within like three feet. There can be like another drone right there and it will not mess with the other drone. It'll be just the drone. Wow. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, We got one more. We always like to finish with some good news of drones helping find lost people. Lost. We usually prefer dogs, but people will do. Uh, uh, And here we've got drones rescue. We've got ads. So many ads. Why is my ad blocker not working? Oh my God. Oh, Daily Mail. I've, I must have, Daily Mail must require me to pause. This is atrocious. Is this what the internet looks like to, to people who don't run ad blockers? Appar- this is apparently. awful. This is just I vomit. This is just terrible. The fuck? How do you live like this? Okay, anyway, back to the... Back All to right, the, our uh, last story we, we want to finish up and let you know that, uh, yeah, another another person was found and recovered. A woman who broke her leg in the woods um, was recovered after eight hours by two different infrared drones that were going around hunting. And finally, we're able to find her in the woods and uh, dispatch help. Yeah. And here we see uh, two uh, bandits uh, kicking her while she's on the ground and stealing her stuff. I don't know why they didn't do more to stop that, but uh, glad that she got rescued eventually. <laughs> and now I'm going to come back to the news and look at the face that you're making. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, and that's going to bring us to the end of the news. <laughs> 